everybody, this is Heidi Bennett of the Vibrant Visionaries Network on YouTube and the Vibrant Visionaries Podcast. Today's episode is a combination of a YouTube video and an audio podcast. You can find all of it at vibrantvisionaries.com. I've also got on the YouTube channel a cooking show called The Vibrant Kitchen, and we've got more shows coming up soon. So please make sure you're subscribed to the Vibrant Visionaries Network on YouTube. And now we've got this amazing conversation with one of my favorite YouTubers. His name is Eduardo Talbert, and his YouTube channel is Monster Tutorials, perfect for Halloween. Let's check it out. Hey, everybody, this is Heidi Bennett of the Vibrant Visionaries Network here on YouTube. And then, of course, the Vibrant Visionaries podcast. You can find everything at vibrantvisionaries.com. I've got a really cool person on. In fact, somebody I've been following on YouTube for a while. Please welcome. I always say that like people are going to clap, right? Please welcome. Yeah. Clap in your living rooms. Clap wherever you are. And it's, add some sound effects. Yeah. <laughs> Eduardo Talbert of Monster Tutorials on YouTube. Welcome. Oh, thank you for having me. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you, yeah, yeah. I can't quite remember how I even discovered you, but my husband and I have been watching ever since. I think it's been the last couple of years. How long have you been um, doing this YouTube project? Uh, I think about seven years. Yeah, seven starting years. Fifteen. Yeah. Wow. Like I said, it's been a, a part-time thing, so it's kind of like slow but steady for sure, yeah. Yeah, I feel like slow but steady. Like, I feel like I'm always trying to do quality over quantity, but not also not get in my way of just, you know, stopping myself from releasing things and <laughs> getting things out there. What, what um, for those who are uninitiated, let's talk about what, what's your channel all about? All right, my channel is Monster Tutorials, and it is a DIY, primarily about Halloween and spooky stuff. Occasionally, I do some other things, including vlogs and variety videos, but the most important thing are like Halloween props, whether it's decorating your house or doing some like really realistic uh, head, you know, like take a, a cheap skull and put some skin on it and make it look like a, like a zombie or something like that. And so, and usually what I've noticed is there are things where, like you said, it's DIY, it's sort of, you know, affordable materials or things you might already have around the house or that you can pick up on the cheap. Is that part of the, the profile of your projects too? That's how it started. Uh, that was the idea because I started on a zero budget uh, from the beginning. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a business endeavor to say it was more like a hobby. And uh, so I made the determination that this was gonna, going to pay for itself because my wife and I were on a very tight, just married budget to pay debt off. So the budget for YouTube you know, projects, like they would call, was zero. So I started with just toilet paper and glue. But then as my skills grew, then also did the techniques. But I'm trying to get back and mix up a little of the old school, cheap uh, stuff to the newer stuff that I've been working on, like resins and silicones, which is a little bit more complex and advanced, a little more expensive. That's cool. I think then I feel like a lot of different people can, you know, enjoy the videos, whether they're starting out new or they've been building their skills along with you and maybe are ready for some more challenging projects and mm -hmm. using some materials that maybe are new to them. Um, and, and there's just like a really nice, casual, friendly, low key vibe to your channel. I was wondering, how did you think about, you know, what you wanted the channel to be and how has it maybe changed over time? OK, so at the beginning, uh, it all started like at a Halloween party that I went to and I got fascinated with the decorations. I had somehow like a lot of us forgotten how much fun being a child was. And I had from the age of... Um, like 20 all the way to about, I don't know, 42, 43, done just a rat race. You know, have kids, raise them, send them to school, work, go every day, get a job that is. Uh, but I said, I wasn't like being myself. So uh, that day that uh, party woke something up in me and uh, I was looking at the decorations and I always wanted to try some art. And that to me was fascinating to, to make creepy art as opposed to 
painting. I've tried painting, but it, uh, after a while, I get bored, maybe after one painting. Also, I tried making jewelry, and after one piece, I'm bored. But with this, for some reason, it just keeps going. Every video is different. You'll never see the same video twice or the same project twice because that's showing exactly how I am, that I cannot do two things at once. So, I mean, two things in a row. Uh, it just, my attention is just not there. I just get bored. So I try something new. So that created like a, like a hunger to learn. And most importantly, I was making these things and I was showing it to my wife and my kids, which, I, you know, what was it? Six, seven years ago, my kids were little and they thought everything I did was cool. It didn't matter if it was, you know, uh, piece of a towel or whatever. And my wife the same because she's always been supportive of whatever I do. Uh, now fast forward to now, uh, my wife still supports everything I do, and my kids think everything I do sucks, regardless of how cool it is. So there's no win there. So I said I need to be accountable to somebody else besides my family because they'll always, you know, they won't be uh, they won't be like the the outside people with a true, honest, unfiltered opinion. So I just started putting the stuff on YouTube, just to be in front of people to work on my uh, social anxiety and my and my shyness. Uh, you're kind of behind that camera, but you're putting yourself, making yourself vulnerable to the comments of the hate and whatever. Right. And uh, what we found out, me and the people that were watching, is that I have a, a gift, if you would, or or a, it makes it easy for me to break a process down and then explain it in terms that people can understand it. So you bring very co complex things that people thought I could never do that to being able to do it on a weekend and say, oh, wow, I never thought I could make a a coffin out of foam or a, or a latex mask, and now you're doing it yourself. So I think that's what so it evolved from being a place where I was putting myself out there to then uh, finding out that I can explain things. And like you said, I'm very chill, calm. I explain things. Uh, there's no, I think that's the right thing. There's no high energy here. You won't see me like yelling like a lot of YouTubers do. We're just chill. Let's make stuff. You know, it's uh, it's kind of like a relaxing activity, not a a stress inducing one. So that's what the channel and it became popular. People liked it. I did not intend to grow my channel. As I mentioned, it was a uh, part time. I'm a data engineer. I work about nine, 10 hours a day. I have three boys that are teenagers. I have a wife, I have two dogs, and a cat. So I'm busy all the time. So finding time for a YouTube channel hobby was just impossible. So I only had a little bit of time to work on it. So when I had the little bit of time, I made sure that it was a uh, it was focused work. So that made me a student of the craft of YouTube. So that in that minute, I kind of gave it all. And uh, I had the best results that you could get for that minute. And that seems to have paid off between being able to explain things and learning how to video, how to edit, how to you know, speak in front of a camera, which I still don't know how. And also the fact that YouTube is very casual, where you can uh, mess up what you're saying, and it's perfectly normal to have a jump cut. So, and it grew and it started growing unintendedly. And now we are about uh, 800 subscribers away from 100,000, which is my next milestone. Wow. Congratulations on that. That's amazing. Thank you. Yeah. And I, I really appreciate you talking about that and that I know there's a billion ways out there to try to, you know, make a popular YouTube channel and everything. But I feel yeah. like it always comes back to, you know, be be yourself, do the things that excite you or the things you want to share and and exactly. and that your your people will find you, your prop mob will find you as as yeah. um as you continue to just be your natural self and, and I'm you know learning and growing as I think as we speak. I have a hundred and seven, you know, subscribers on YouTube right. and I have people who are watching but haven't subscribed yet and I and I'm I'm not uh, concerned with that number. I'm excited to 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 play around and uh, much like you and and other vibrant visionaries out there. I'm a lifelong learner. Get bored fast. I still I remember being a kid and um you know saying yes I want to learn saxophone. Okay, no I don't want to learn saxophone. Yes I'll try a guitar. No I don't want to mm -hmm. do guitar. Oh yes I sing and I love singing. Oh I don't like writing music but I'll sing other people's you know, interpret it. Yeah. And I'm always encouraging people and reminding myself that it's totally not just natural, but a, um, a great thing to, it's okay to, to jump from one thing to another until you find your groove, the thing that you 
enjoy and and speaks to your natural gifts. And I think there's old school messaging out there that's like, find one thing and beat your head against the wall as you learn it. Right. And and there's some balance between like having the fortitude and challenging yourself to learning something new, but also being okay with saying, you know what, this thing, this is not for me. Yeah. Because that oh. next gift could be right around the corner. Kind of like when you're dating somebody and it's not really working, but you're afraid to let go because it is a yeah. relationship. And just like, if you can let it go, then you could have the, you know, the partner that was meant to be right around the corner, but they're not available if you're locked into like, I have to do this, I have to do this. And I could definitely relate to that. I've done a lot of different creative things in my day. <laughs> Very true. Yeah, no, you, you nailed it on the head about the, the curiosity. It's a gift that we have that a lot of people, for some reason, learn to suppress it, maybe because we're in a consumer society where your curiosity always costs. You know, if you want to learn guitar, the cheapest guitar, like a real one is 400 bucks. That kind of stuff might, that might be one of the things. The other thing is, like you said, that mindset that you're supposed to stick to one thing. And to me, the biggest gift for me was like, first that I was curious. So I nurtured that curiosity. And then that I was uh, allowed to pursue that curiosity to see what's cool and what's not. And you start becoming like a learner of things in life, the things that you like. The other thing you mentioned that was really true is to do something you're passionate about or your your energy. There's very formulaic ways to have a successful YouTube channel, right? There's some people that say just cut the best goals from the soccer season and you're and it's going to it's going to pick up some steam. That's cool. But if it's something like a like an artistic expression, like a personal project, uh, like you said, something that you have to be passionate about because that energy shows in the video and uh, you can see that energy diminish when that is not really what you wanted to do. Right when you dread turning the camera on, uh, like I dread turning it on just because of the anxiety of getting started, which is kind of like a creative uh, delay, right? It's like delaying, you know, kind of like fitting all the parts. A pro creative procrastination is what I, right, what right, I read okay. it from somebody on the five second rule or something. Uh, that, that it's not that you're lazy, it's that you're processing that in your head. Uh, uh, for some people, you have to finish it. Uh, most of my projects, I finish in my head before they even come to fruition or to be manifested into the material world. So, yep, you're very right. Yeah, there's so much pre-production going on in the brain, right? Sometimes I mm -hmm. feel like I need to put a note on my forehead so my husband can read it here at home, you know, since we've all been working, or a lot of us have been working from home for so many years now, is to say, like, I'm working or I'm thinking, or, you know, like, don't bother I'm me. Not <laughs> I'm not here. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And that, that, that sometimes you can trip yourself up and feel like, uh, am I ever going to get to this or, or start imposter syndrome or that anxiety yeah. starts to take or whatever. And, and then, yeah, to, to breathe through that and trust yourself that, you know, if this is something you're interested in doing, you will get to it. And, Right. Yeah. Yeah. Find a way. So it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you shouldn't be in a hurry either. But uh, I know, like I said, there are some pressures in the material world where you have to bring a paycheck or food. So you don't have the luxury of waiting until the creative fairy comes and illuminates you and you have to kind of keep going. But that's the other end of the spectrum that has helped me is the minimum viable product. If that video looks good and it's enough for people to understand it, publish it. And if there's some feedback or you notice some things, just improve it for the next one. You always keep improving. Just don't get stuck. But uh, but just publish the video. Don't be, you know, don't don't get scared of that. That fear will freeze you. And then you'll have videos, which some of them I still do, are in my hard drive for years, right? So I uh, release them because you don't think they're good enough for something. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. That's same for podcasting too, you know, and for my YouTube you know, the first few, I like somebody was giggling at the fact that the first episode's 20 minutes long and I'm just making guacamole, right? Like how long does it take to make nice. guacamole? But I'm sharing like stories too and trying to bring out oh, my yeah. personality and get loose in front of the camera and stuff. <laughs> it is your project. It's your baby. You do it on your own terms, like I said, and uh, you will find an audience for it that I like, I can assure you that that will happen. There's an audience for everything. Yeah, yeah, for sure. 
Um, so what have you got going on? This is going to come out either right at the end of September, the beginning of October, as quickly as we can turn it around. So what's going on on the YouTube channel right now that you'd love for people to check out or would be good for? And, and I just to interject, like Halloween to me, I grew up in Southern California, Seal Beach, a small town where people would do elaborate home oh, cool. decorating. And uh, my grandma, she had a tradition of inviting people into her courtyard and serving them hot chocolate. And my mom and my aunts would all, you know, get into costume or do carnivals or do haunted houses. My mom yeah. used to do haunted houses. And here in the East Bay, Alameda, the small town that I live close to, uh, people do very elaborate, you know, Halloween decorating out front, front yard, total DIY, you know, I mean, sure, there's some yeah. commercial products too, but people really, you know, they'll make pirate ships and all sorts of things. So definitely um, love all of that stuff and would love to hear, yeah, what, what you've got cooking right now. Well, I have a lot of stuff because there's high season for Halloween, right? We are in the middle of August. Uh, if you have like a professional hunt, you start in like March or April, that's your high season when you start buying all the products, start building anything big, like a, like a haunted house. But if you're like a home hunter, a home decorator like me, or like some of the other people on the channel, usually you start making the stuff right around July, August, so that uh, in September, you're just uh, you know, crossing the T's and dotting the I's on your, on your decorations. Uh, so we have a bunch of tutorials coming out. Uh, we have some really cool ones that some ones I thought was really cool. I also like to do unboxings and uh, a lot of the the audience live uh, vicariously through some of the videos uh, by luck or because they live in a place that doesn't celebrate Halloween. So I have like a, the unboxing of the 12 foot skeleton. So I'm going to unbox it, set it up and kind of like review it uh, because people in Australia, people in England that that love Halloween, that's the only way they can like really see it and enjoy it. And specifically, that that skeleton has uh, been so scarce that uh, that one out of a thousand people get to get one, and I was lucky to get one of the two that I ordered. So those people also want to see what it looks like in a decoration and get ideas and see how hard it is to put together, right? So that's the other thing. Uh, one thing you mentioned about people do, buying some commercial stuff that is true that some people do. But at the end is the, the creative scene that they put on their house, right? You can buy like a mummy from a store, but it's how you put that mummy in your own decoration, your own context that makes it magical. Right. Now, I grew up in Colombia, South America. There's no Halloween there. I went to a British school with some uh, American influence. So we did, the kids, all of us would go trick-or-treating. Um, we would go mostly to the parents of kids that were in that school because they knew to give candy. But there was no decoration. We wore costumes, but there was no decorations. So coming here and seeing what you see uh, in Salem, New Orleans, what you're talking about, and movies like Trick or Treat is like mind blowing. Uh, the things that you can do, right? Yeah, totally. Um, and I've uh, I live in the Fruitvale area of uh, Oakland, California, and so there's a big uh, Dia de los Muertos parade and oh, you know that. decorations and. Um, you know, kids dressed up, of course. And, you know, I've been to Oaxaca a couple of times and it's this incredible blend of people out, you know, celebrating oh, yeah. their uh, passed on loved ones, but also a lot of Halloween influence as well. So it's just a, a, a riot of color and celebration and music and late night parties and families and everything. So it's something that uh, is a big part of my family and we'll be also highlighting here on, on the YouTube channel um, uh, some recipes and ideas and things like that for the Halloween and Dia de los Muertos as well. Oh, so cool. it'll be fun. Awesome. So thank you so much for talking. I think we'll just wrap up by letting people know where they can subscribe. I mean, it's on YouTube, but like exactly again, what your channel is and any other socials you want to share. Absolutely. My user is uh, Monster Tutorials in the YouTube channel, in Instagram, in TikTok. Uh, then in Facebook is Monster Tutorials HQ, as in headquarters. And uh, my email is uh, eduardo at monstertutorials.com. If anybody needs anything, uh, I would love to chat. 
yeah, you're a great person to chat with, and I really appreciate it. Um, and it's so fun. I'm so glad we were able to set aside this time in our busy days to just hang out and talk prop. <laughs> oh no, thank you for the invitation. I know this is not in the perfect line of your of your in your theme, but uh, so I'm so super excited to be able to add something to your podcast. Something. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, the everybody listening is you know we have a lot of people who are horror directors on and uh, people that are into, you know, sci-fi and, you know, so crafting and doing this kind of stuff is, it's like adjacent to the interests. And, and my friend Kelly, who I know is listening, she's her and her husband and her daughter, they always go big for Halloween decorating here. So I know they'll enjoy listening and, and subscribing to your channel. Well, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Okay, everybody. Again, vibrantvisionaries.com is where you can find um, over 80 episodes of the podcast, interviews with musicians, artists, all other sorts of quirky creatives. We've got a few uh, interviews like this one with Eduardo here on the YouTube channel, also cooking demos. And we're going to, now that we're kind of being able to get back out into the world, we're going to be talking with local creatives here in the Bay Area of California. I've been Heidi Bennett, and ciao for now. Mm -hmm.